Welcome to 20 at Twilight, a weekly video post that provides a 20 minute guided meditation, a way of praying with scripture to conclude the day focusing on and resting in the presence of God. I am Tracy Leslie, a certified spiritual director, life coach, and senior pastor at Trinity United Methodist Church in downtown Lafayette. As light departs to let the earth be one with night, silence deepens in the mind. The basket of twilight brims over with colors gathered from the day. As evening comes, may all that is unforgiven in you be released and may your fears yield to deep tranquility and trust. Let us pray. We praise and thank you, O oh God, for you are without beginning and without end. Through Christ, you created the whole world. Through Christ, you preserve it. You made the day for the works of light and the night for the refreshment of our minds and bodies. In the brightness of your sun, we spend each day. In the darkness of the night, you light our way, always. You protect us with the umbrella of your love. To you, God, be all praise and glory forever and ever. Amen. Before I share the scripture, I would invite you to take a moment to quiet yourself, to tune into your mind, body, and spirit. Are there any thoughts that are racing through your mind? If so, breathe deeply, slowing yourself down. See if you can gently set those thoughts aside. Allow yourself this time to rest in God's presence. Continue to breathe deeply in and out in and out several times. See if you can feel your body start to relax, to soften the tension kind of flowing out of it. Quiet your spirit, perhaps repeating the mantra of Jesus's words over the turbulent sea. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. You know, may not be aware that only one of Jesus's miracles appears in all four of our biblical gospels. It is the feeding of the 5,000. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, its setting is that of a lonely or deserted place. Whereas in John, we know only that Jesus was on a mountain. But the setting may not have mattered much anyway. Most of Jesus' followers would have been peasants, and the poverty of those ancient peasants would have made food insecurity an ongoing concern, especially since Rome would routinely confiscate food from peasant villages in order to feed their troops. In John's Gospel, Jesus raises the question of how they will provide food for this crowd, but in the other Gospels, it's the disciples who raise the question. In all four of our Gospels, even though the disciples have already spent so much time with Jesus, they see no way to, to address this problem. 
this lack of food. This, in their minds, is going to be a disaster. But of course, we know it wasn't because someone, according to John's gospel, a young boy, and the others, it's an anonymous source. Someone is noted as having five loaves of bread and two fish. I've always wondered how this information became known, right? Probably weren't carrying a little lunch pail with, you know, a cartoon character on it. Did they confide in someone that they had lunch? I don't know. Had they already pulled their food out and begun to eat because they were hungry? I don't know. Some of the disciples knew, and they report this puny mid-year supply to Jesus. And most of us know how it goes from there. The food is miraculously multiplied. Everyone eats their fill. And it is so abundantly multiplied that there are leftovers. So allow me to read just a couple of the verses from Luke chapter 9. Jesus said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of about 50 each. They did so and made them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, Jesus looked up to heaven. He blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And all ate and were full. What was left over was gathered up 12 baskets of broken pieces. I hear this as a story about generosity, risk, and trust. The actions of whoever had that bread and fish go beyond generous, right? I mean, generous is when we buy a friend's cup of coffee, right? It's not like buying them a cup of coffee is going to empty out our bank account or place us in any personal jeopardy. But the provider of the bread and fish was offering up everything he or they had for the good of the rest of the crowd. It was a very risky thing to do. So what allows someone to take that kind of risk? Well, I'd say trust. Confidence in the willingness and abilities of Jesus to respond to our needs. Trust in God's goodness and grace. So this evening, I'm gonna invite you to reflect around your level of generosity with regards to four things, your money, your time, your talents, and your emotional investment. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, Jesus looked up to heaven, blessed them and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd and all ate and were filled. What was left over was gathered up 12 baskets of broken pieces. Where in your life do you recognize the need to be more generous with your money? Consider the connection between your trust and Jesus and your willingness to grow in your financial generosity. And as always, if at any point you would like more time to reflect, simply pause the video. Now consider, where in your life do you recognize the need to be more generous with your talents? Consider the connection between your trust 
in Jesus and your willingness to grow in the sharing of your talents. Next, where in your life do you recognize the need to be more generous with your time? Consider the connection between your trust in Jesus and your willingness to grow in the offering of your time. Finally, where in your life do you recognize the need to be more generous with your heart? Consider the connection between your trust in Jesus and your willingness to be emotionally vulnerable with others.
Almighty God, as evening shadows lengthen and day turns to night, be near to those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Eternal creator of light, Yours is the morning and yours is the evening. Draw us to yourself so there will be no darkness within us so that we may rest in the peace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>